Hey folks, good afternoon. This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Clay Motion here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and this is the Clay Way. If this video seems to be helpful, consider subscribing, clicking the notifications, most of all sharing my videos, sending me your nice comments, and giving me the big old thumbs up. If you got a question and I can answer it, you can look me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook and send me a message through Facebook Messenger. I'll happily try. Today we're working on a 2000 Chevy 3500 one ton. Uh, cabin chassis, this is a dump truck, really doesn't make much difference. Um, and it's got a 6.5 diesel in it. We're gonna replace the vacuum pump on this thing. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. You are gonna need a puller for your front pump pulley if you did not buy the vacuum pump that includes the pulley. I'd be willing to bet that this is a pretty straightforward, not simple job, but not too technical. So we're gonna get going with that. We're gonna first remove take out the three bolts through the pulley. Hopefully yours has holes in it, just like mine does. And it's located right down here on the passenger side of the engine. And you can see it right down there. We're gonna remove the belts. Be pretty straightforward. To remove the belt, we need to stick a 3 8 ratchet up in the top of the tensioner and turn it counterclockwise. Because our pump sits on the truck, just like this, we're gonna to need to look for bolts at the 11 o'clock position, the one o'clock position, and the five o'clock position. So we'll spin the pulley till we're able to put our 13 millimeter socket on them three bolts. Taking the tips of our finger and putting them through the access holes on the pump itself will allow us access to feel the three bolts that are holding the pump on. We can see our socket is rested on the one o'clock position bolt. We can actually take our fingers and put them in the back of the pump to feel our bolt, which is right here, and then put our socket through the center of the pump and easily remove the bolt. With the bolt entirely unscrewed, we can simply put our fingers to the rear of here, unscrew it the rest of the way if we didn't get it out all the way. For our third and final bolt that's located at the five o'clock position, we're gonna go ahead and stick our ratchet through the, the pulley, move the pulley to the indicated position of five o'clock, and then start to loosen the bolt. This is the position of our ratchet when the bolt is at five o'clock and our ratchet is stuck in properly. Now I can reach my hands around the back side of the pulley and with my two fingers, my pointer finger and my middle finger, I'm able to pull the bolt out and the compressor itself is loose. We need to remove one more hose off of the vacuum pump before it is 100% free. The hose that we need to remove is right here and it has a single tube going into it or what. Portions of the vacuum hose that we're removing from the vacuum pump are up here in the top and it's indicated with orange. We need to be very careful and gentle with this hose because it could be brittle and it could break and we don't want that to happen. I would imagine very often that these are misdiagnosed as to have a bad pump. I'm not certain if this pump is defective or not, but I'm gonna go ahead and reach up here and I'm gonna pull this airline from the back of my alternator, remembering how it's routed down through the bottom there. And we're gonna pull a vacuum test. Now, like I said, be gentle with the line. We don't wanna break it when it's not already broken. If you do end up breaking it, it runs from this location here, up underneath here, back around the side, and goes into right here. And it's probably pretty easy to replace. So we'll probably replace this one with some new vacuum line, just to make sure, and because it's actually broken. Now we have our pump removed, we're gonna need to remove the pulley off of it, and that is gonna require a special puller. Okay, to pull this pulley, 
we're using a power steering puller. How this works is, this is called a, a thrust washer nut. Put this on here. These two halves have little grooves that fit down there on the grooves of the pulley right there. So we'll put that inside there. And then we'll put this collar on and that locks that portion. Then we'll drive the stud through the center of there, which is this right here. And then holding this nut right here and turning this nut at the same time will allow the pressure to pull up on the pulley and pull it off. Okay, installation can be a little bit more particular or complicated. First thing we need to do is we need to find the appropriate bolt that screws into the tip Start of the there. wrong bolt. It will only screw in three or four threads. It needs to screw in securely and screw in tight. The ideal way of installation of any pulley power steering or not is with the press, but because you probably don't have one of these at home, I'm going to show you how to do it with the installer. Tool. First thing that we're going to do is we are going to insert our installer portion of our bit. Then we're going to go ahead and we can tighten that up just a little bit with a wrench if we want to, but it's not really necessary because we're just pushing force against the pin. We're not necessarily turning that. We want to make sure that our pulley is seated square onto the shaft itself. We don't want it to be kitty wampus like that. And you can just do that by applying pressure, making sure that it's flat. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a thrust washer and a bearing, and that's what I'm using right here. We're gonna put it over the top of here, then that way we don't have to drive it down as far. And that also allows our gnarl, which is where a wrench goes, to come through the port center portion of this. Now with this, we're gonna go ahead and use this to drive it down. You kind of starting to get the idea of how this works. It's pretty much just pressing the shaft onto the collar. Now we could use air or something like that to drive this on here. The problem would be that that might generate too much force onto the pulley itself and we don't want to damage the unit. I gotta be honest, I ran out of a little bit of space, so I ended up taking off my thrust washer and using another nut and bolt with the washer on it and driving it down the rest of the way. Now she's on all the way, looking good, and I'm sure we didn't damage it. It went right down real easy. She's working great. So now we'll go reinstall this puppy. Now when we spin our new Dorman vacuum pump, it makes a popping noise, which is cool. The other one did not do that. Okay, the best way to put these bolts in is to put them in head backwards like this and then insert them in the hole and then with your other arm, put your pump where it needs to be and made up your bolts. Obviously, reinstallation is reversal of removal. Just make sure you put on your vacuum hose prior to putting your bolts in on your front. Hopefully, the video was helpful for you guys and you enjoyed it. I want you guys to know that I do this stuff for you because I love doing this stuff. I really, truly do. I love getting up and going to work every day. God bless you guys. Remember, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. Don't be the next to them. Be the first to you. Have a great day.